Hey guys. Mm. So, hello, good morning to Maureen, Clarice, Luke. Hello. Who did I miss? Mr. Zeke. Hey guys. Happy Halloween. So it's Halloween over here. For some of you, not Halloween quite yet. But um, this is my, my contribution to a Halloween outfit. <laughs> I just put a cat on my head. Okay, so today's um, competition winner is Kate and she was okay with me transforming her image into a real spooky, creepy Halloween kind of image. Um, I asked her first because I didn't want, um, want her to be offended <laughs> by me turning it her to the half dead sort of thing. <laughs> but, um, can you guys tell me if the music is too loud? Because then I'll put it down. But it's nice having some background music. Alrighty, ready. Let me close the door. Uh, I really need to get a new chair. This thing keeps sinking. Music is fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I have lovely vegan chocolate, Sweet William, and I have a nice strong black coffee, and I have my pencils, and who could be happier? Okay, I'm going to go all pastels today. So a couple of you have actually asked me for a tutorial on how to use pastels and stuff. I don't have that much experience using pastels, but I thought I'd give today a go. Um, I'll give it a go today. The portrait that I did, the self portrait that I did with like the orange flowers and the hair, that one I used these supplies. So I'll just use the same stuff. Um, so I'll just go through what supplies I am using. So the paper I'm using is the Metientes paper. And the color I'm using is the one that's right at the back. So it's like a, a dark brownish sort of color. It's got some nice colors in there. Uh, it doesn't list the colors. It just says assorted gray colors. But they they warm tones, not cool tones. Apart from that, which is also a warm tone. Yep. So I'm using the color right at the back. It's like a dark brown. And it's got a bit of a texture and it's perfect for pastels. The pastel pencils I'm using, I'm using the Krita color ones. Um, I don't like them very much, but they are all I've got, so they're just going to have to make do. I find that when you um, color in with these pastels, they have a grainy feel on them, so they feel, sometimes they feel like they've got sand in the core, which, and then it like, it feels scratchy on the paper. It's a horrible feeling. But anyways, I'm just going to make do. I've got a few pan pastels over here as well uh, that I'll be using. And then to sharpen my um, my pastel pencils, I'll use a blade. And I'll show you how I do that. And the fixative I'll use between layers is the Micador Workable Matte Fixative. Um, so it says here that it's clear, permanent protection for pastel, charcoal, chalk, and pencil work. And I love, I really love this fixative. It works wonders. So because we are not using a sanded paper, we're just using a, um, a pastel paper. It's, the, pa the pan pastels don't adhere to the paper very well. So I'm going to have to, excuse me, between layers, I'm going to have to spray with the fixative. Ah. Oh. Okay, oh, and then I've got three of these, um, what do you call them? So they're like pastel, 
blenders, but they have like a um, silicon like feel. So they're like rubbery. So that's really great for pastels when you're trying to just um, blend or fix smaller details. I love using this in the eyes. And then I will still be using some of my regular pencils like my Faber-Castell Polychromos um, just for the real fine details because the pastel pencils don't have as fine a point as I'd like so when I'm doing the real fine details like the, the black between the teeth or the details around the eye I will use my probably use my Polychromos pencils for that okay So, any questions? Shapers, thank you, Nanette. These are pastel shapers. And again, I don't have much experience with this, so I can't really give a very thorough review on the supplies. Yeah, I guess I can just talk about it a bit as I go. But otherwise, yes. Okay, so... Yesterday's um, winner for this live stream was Kate and her original image that she submitted was this image over here. Um, so that's Kate and we, um, or I changed the image up so that it looks like this um, to fall in place with the Halloween theme today. And that is why it looks the way it looks. And then I thought it'd be great to experiment with the pastels. And let's get straight into it. So I need to remember to record. So for existing patrons, you guys know about my schedule for this month. And I was supposed to submit um, part one of the five part uh, short tutorials of The Crow. And... Unfortunately, I did not get to do that yesterday. I didn't get to do the first part. I only finished yesterday's drawing at about 3 o'clock. And then um, I had to edit and do a whole bunch of other things. And it's a bit hard as well because I have a student with me doing um, work experience in the afternoons. So I sort of need to help her with whatever jobs I'm giving her and, and show her how to do things. So that sort of took a bit away from my time. So... Hopefully I can try and get it done maybe this afternoon or otherwise I'll cram a few in next week because she finishes her work experience by the end of this week. So we'll see how it goes. So I'm sorry if that part's going to be a little bit late. But I'll, at least I'm letting you know straight up. Okay, let's get into this. I'm going to start off with the eyes. I always like to start with the eyes and then sort of work my way around. <laughs> Radio. I'm back, I'm back. Hopefully. <sighs> How inconvenient. <laughs> okay, I got my hotspot ready for when that happens again. It has been, last week it was out for like three days on and off because of maintenance. And um, it seems like they're still doing a couple of things. So I'll just make sure my phone is ready on standby. Radio. everything good good to go again right yes I'm drinking strong coffee thank goodness I have it I think today is going to be a patient patience tester we'll see how I go <laughs> okay so I sharpened this with a blade which wasn't very fun but I guess I'll get used to it 
and I'm using the cloud gray color um, and starting off with the eyes Hi Esme. Esme says this is the first time I'm making it to your live stream, so I'm very excited. <laughs> well, that's really great. I hope the live stream doesn't keep cutting out all the time, so it should hopefully be an enjoyable experience. Jamie says my internet is terrible since getting the NBN. It's a joke. Well, Jamie, we got the wireless NBN, and it was supposed to be amazing. But it's not. And it's supposed to be really fast. We, I'm pretty sure we even upgraded and it's it's no different at all. It's like they say, oh, pay an extra, I don't know how much a month so that you can get extra fast internet. Meanwhile, you're just paying the bill but you're not getting what they tell you you're getting. And it's not like we way out there either. But anyways, we'll stop with the complaining. So I'm using the shaper. It even says shaper on it. Far out, I'm stupid sometimes. So using the shaper to blend that in. I love the shapers. Rob says it's his first time also. Rob, I hope it's Rob for a guy and not short for like Robin or something. So I don't know if you're a he or she. It's so hard with all the usernames. Maureen's asking, do you buy the shapers at any craft store or Amazon? No, I bought the shapers online. There's, there's a guy online, I forgot his name already, but I bet one of you can tell me. He is a pastel artist and he does a lot of tutorials and he has his own um, a pastel paper range and he sells all the shapers and pastel pencils and all that that he recommends and he's got quite a few tutorials on YouTube. I think it's something Collins or something like that. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure I got it from his website online. Yeah. One of you mentioned him, Colin Bradley. Thank you, Jamie. Yes, yes. See? We are all just on the same brain sink. <laughs> Radio. So with the black, like I'm not going to use the pastel black for the details around the eye. For that, I will use my polychromous pencil. Um, because I like to keep the detail of a sharp pencil and I'm not going to get such a sharp point with the pastel pencils. And the eyes are so important because it's, it's, it's scary doing human eyes, like animal eyes you can slightly get them off and they'll still look like that animal but human eyes you just get them wrong just a little and it changes the image completely. It makes it look like a different person. So I'm usually terrified of doing eyes when it comes to a portrait. Lucky for me, I only have to do one. Therese has got to go. She'll be back in a bit. No problem. See you in a little while. Christine. Okay, I'll keep my Facebook and my Patreon open to check if there's any entries as we go. But don't worry, I will triple check before I actually announce the next winner. Thanks, Christine. I got it. All good. You are 
entered. Where's my list? I'll have a look. Oh good. Right here. I'm actually really excited about this drawing. So what I love about this competition is is how I get to do the drawings the way I like it and I think that's what's really going to help through the whole process of doing a drawing every day because I get to do it the way I want to do it which is really fun um, whereas if you're doing it the way someone would commission you to do it then you're doing it the way they want you to do it so it may not necessarily be as fun as what what it would be if you made your made up your own mind about it so um, I really really like that and I think that's what's going to get me through doing all these drawings every day for a month because far out it is crazy work. I finished editing and getting everything ready at 10.30 last night. But, but this is good. I'm not complaining, I'm sorry. I, I might sound like I'm complaining, but I'm not. I'm just happy that I get to decide to do it in my own way. <laughs> good to see you on here so for the for those of you who don't know ellen she does an amazing amount of um ink work so she you probably know her for her spirit animals if you do know her if not check out her channel it's really cool and um it's, it's so much fun to watch she uses a technique that i'm very afraid of using because it's you've got no sense of control um with what you're doing so the ink you just wherever it flows is where it's gonna flow and you just gotta make something amazing out of it and Ellen does exactly that Esme is asking do you find it easy to blend pastels and colored pencils I've seen this technique quite a bit now and it seems fun um, yes, I find it easy to blend, although if you're putting colored pencils over the top of past, like pan pastels, you first need to seal the pan pastels with the fixative before you apply the colored pencils, because otherwise the colored pencil is just going to move the pastel around on the paper, and it won't adhere to it. So that's the only thing. So you just have to, um, between layers, you just have to sort of um, make sure you put a fixative. Rob says, I feel so guilty because I can't afford to support you on Patreon, but I'm benefiting from this free tutorial. Oh, thank you so much. Well, that's good. The whole point is that I know that not everybody can afford something like that, but at least my YouTube does make content available um, for, for those that can't. That's good to hear. I'm glad. Yeah, don't feel guilty. It's all good. I know that we can't always afford... Um, the extra luxuries of, you know, paying a subscription. Sometimes there's sacrifices people have to make to get by, especially in today's age, it's not that easy. It's like you have the rich and the poor and you don't have many of the in-between. And just supporting me on YouTube makes a big difference. It really does. <laughs> I'm loving how Kate's eye is turning out. So this is working for me. Kate was actually in my workshop on Saturday, so it was a nice surprise to see her get picked as well. So 
She makes a big effort to really attend my workshops. And she is a patron. <laughs> She's such a laugh as well. <laughs> You're guaranteed a, lot, a nice chuckle if you are in a workshop with her. Oh, that looks cool. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to block in the real black bits and then I can do the skin tones. And then if my pastels end up going like sort of over the skin tones, then that's perfectly fine because I'll still see my lines. Luke's asking, what kind of color shaper do you like most? The conic one. Actually, I don't know. I like all of them. So it depends on what I'm using. If I'm gonna, if I'm trying to shape something that's got more of a straight line, then I'd use this one. But otherwise, more of the like small round areas, I'll use the pointy ones. Um, I do like the firmer ones more than the real flimsy one. But it does it depends on what I'm I'm trying to shape. I don't think you're screaming at me if you put something in capital letters. Oh, thanks, Maureen. Yep, Maureen says that if you look at Colin Bradley's website, you can get the shapers for a pretty decent price. So, um, yeah, just look up Colin Bradley and you should find it. But do not get, I wouldn't recommend you get the Krita Color pastel pencils. I'm so sorry I'm saying that Krita Color, but they are very grainy. They got a very grainy feel. I think Colin Bradley recommends the Faber Castell pastel pencils, I think. So I'd take his advice if you're looking for any advice about pastel pencils. And if you guys want any reviews on something, then check out Art Gear Guides YouTube channel. So he does a lot of um he does reviews on something all the time pencil supplies and every month he his reviews are published in the color pencil magazine and he's such a nice person to communicate to so if you have any questions he's very open to always answer your questions so that's where you go i'm sorry i don't really do reviews and stuff on supplies um because i don't go through all the research I just try it and I'm like, yeah, I like it or I don't. <laughs> That's it. I can't really give you a very thorough explanation. And um, also, I quite often, for my tutorials, use the same supplies over and over so that those that follow my tutorials 
um, don't have to buy so many supplies. But I am taking the opportunity now for these this month's competition to use whatever supplies I have, um, just so that I'm using them a bit more. But otherwise, my tutorials, I kind of keep the same thing going so that those that want to follow my tutorials have the supplies to do it because they always the same. That makes sense. But yeah. Reviews on stuff, check out Art Gear Guide if you want reviews on colored pencils. Um, if you want more with like pencils and paint, then check out Lisa's channel. And if you want to know about pastels, check out Colin Bradley. There you go. <laughs> it's not all that often you'll hear an artist refer you to other artists, but I really think that people should be sharing what they know. And if they know someone who knows something, then tell people. Sharing is good. And I got to know all of this stuff by doing research and finding out, finding videos and tutorials by various artists. So it's good knowledge to know a bit about everybody. And it's good to follow numerous people because then you find different things from different people that you like. Clarice is back. Welcome back. <laughs> um, Luke says, I like the Derwin pastel pencils. Okay, that's good. So do the Derwin pastel pencils, at least they don't get a grain in them. Luke says, I also like the reviews on Art Gear Guide. Yeah, they, they're really good. He's thorough, so he goes through every... Um, every detail and he, he shows you his results and what different things they can do so it's very good <laughs> Clarice says if you saw my math you would think different don't worry I am exactly the same I am incapable of doing math calculators and things like that exist for a reason but this might be I, I find and I don't know if you guys might think the same, but I find that very creative people are less inclined at being good at math. <laughs> so very artistic, creative people aren't that great at math. And then the real logical engineering type people, the opposite of, they use the opposite side of the brain, are more inclined to do math. So I think I'm more I used more my right side of the brain, which is more the creative side, and like 2% of the left side of my brain. Whereas those that are more math inclined will probably use 60% of the left, maybe 40% of the right. You know, I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm not at all math inclined, so you're not alone. <laughs> That's... You know, these streams are also so nice because I, it just becomes automatic. The drawing just becomes automatic and the time just flows so so nicely. So it does um, make it really enjoyable so that it doesn't become a task. Because I don't want this to become a job. It must always stay fun. The minute it becomes a job, then the fun evaporates, which is not what we want. As I said, I tried a few Creative Color Pastel Pencils just to see how they work and they were really grainy and scratched my paper. Yep, they are. I do not like the Creative Colors, but they're the only pastel pencils I have and no, I haven't tried any others yet. But if I was going to buy another set, I would buy the Faber-Cast style pastel pencils. <laughs> mm. 
Marie says she is maths plus she has a science degree. Wow. So you must be using equal parts of your brain then, Marie, I think. <laughs> Luke says that the Derwin pastel pencils are hard to blend though, but maybe that's common to pastel pencils. Yeah, I like I like um, using the pan pastels along with the pastel pencils. So I use the pan pastels for the larger areas and I use the pastel pencils for the smaller areas. <laughs> Marjean says I did a Facebook left brain quiz and came up 64% <laughs> right brain. <laughs> yep. Well, I send me that test. I need to try it too. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Luke says, I found that using a little bit of water helps to blend the pastel pencils. Ooh, I don't know if I'll do that. It, it would probably produce quite a nice effect. But I wouldn't do that on this paper though, because this paper is not very liquid inclined at all. So you can't use solvents or anything on this paper because it just it won't work. It will not work. It's like the paper turns into tissue. Okay, I shouldn't be coloring in with the black. I should just be doing the small designs. I'm excited to put the pinkish tones on here. Um, okay. So, because the, um, the, the feet and the little antennas of the, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's a moth or a butterfly. I think it's a butterfly. Because moths, when they land, their wings are flat. Anyways, um, those are really fine, so I'm going to use a sharp point. Clarice says Jason Morgan uses Stabilo, Derwin, and Faber Castell, and he doesn't sharpen by hand. He uses a Derwin sharpener. He has a video about it. Oh, cool, Clarice. Can you maybe uh, maybe share that on Facebook or share that on Patreon? That'd be really great. And then um, that, but only share it if that's a free video, not if you have to be a patron. Um, so I support Jason Morgan as well. He's also really, really great, um, especially in pastels and obviously with wildlife art. So he is also another one to, to look at if you want information about pastel pencils and paper and anything to do with pastels. And he also uses um, uh, pencils from time to time. So that's also, yes, yeah, another good one. Rob is asking, can you mix charcoal with pastel pencils? Um, I don't see why not. They both sort of are like chalky. So I don't know. I guess that would have to be an experiment. Or that would be a question for someone like Colin Bradley or Jason Morgan. Because they would, I think they would have the answer for that. Oh, I am so excited about this drawing. I think it's going to look amazing. I really love the, um, the, like, what do you call it? The, like, sugar skull sort of theme, although this is not quite there, but I do like the incorporation of skull and flowers and stuff. I think it looks quite nice.
So Luke says that is it Jason Morgan uses the Derwent hand crank sharpener, which gives him a nice point. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and try, try and use one of these pastel pencils in my sharpener and see what happens. Uh, I don't think so because my sharpener makes a point that big. I don't think a pastel pencil will hold quite such a long core. Let's experiment and see. Oh my gosh! Look at that! It actually works! It works! Okay. So... Oh, that is lovely! I hated using the blade earlier on. Okay, so you can use a school smart electric sharpener for your pastel pencils instead of a blade. So that's good to know. It's good to know. See, we all learn something new every day. Plus it's good. I'm getting a liking for for pastel pencils. I don't know why, but I've never like really gotten that into pastel pencils. Maybe it's just because I've never known how to use them properly. But I do, I think pastels are the way to go if you're doing portraits because it definitely helps with smoother skin tones. Um, doing really smooth skin tones in colored pencils can be quite a process, a very long process. If you use pastels and pencils for skin tones, definitely not, and you can blend them really smooth pretty easy. <laughs> Christine's really happy that I'm using pastel pencils. She's the one that's been asking for a while, I'm pretty sure. It's like, when are you using pastels? Well, right now I'm not using a pastel pencil, but the rest of this I will be. So I'll try and only keep the only non-pastel piece that I'll be using in this drawing will be my black polychromos pencil. The rest will be pan pastels and pastel pencils. So... It doesn't break. Well, we will we will experiment with this this sharpener and the pastel pencils through this drawing. So we will see see if they break or not. Though it feels pretty pretty strong. But yes, we will have to use it to see. Kate has some beautiful wrinkles. It's beautiful. When I look at Kate, I sort of envision her as a real wise woman. She has those wise eyes. Luke says he's afraid of the pan pastels. Well, you have to try them and play around with them to to get a feel. But there's they're so easy to fix. So if you make a mistake with them, it's really easy to fix. I'm surprised that are you afraid of colored pencils? Because I'd be more afraid of colored pencils than pan pastels. Because pan pastels are easier to fix and and render than colored pencils are.
Esme says the pan pastels seem easier to use. They um for skin tones, smooth blending and skin tones and like blurry backgrounds, definitely easier to use than colored pencils. Okay, so I think that's okay for the black. Right. Let's get into I'd like to add a bit of a gray tone to the iris. birthday is coming up happy early birthday hopefully during this um, this whole competition hopefully your entry will be picked once and I think that'll be a nice nice gift in the mail okay so if your entry gets picked Marie and I hopefully nobody else disagrees with this but if your entry gets picked and your drawing is done then I will send you your drawing for free as a birthday gift and if anyone else has birthdays in this month and your entries come through, you need to prove to me that it's your birthday and then I'll send it to you for free. <laughs> okay. What am I doing? Oh, I want to add a little bit of grey to the iris. Like a nice... Oh, I like this one. So, elephant grey. Just to give it almost a... More of a... Kate has these really like deep blue gray eyes. No, don't start with the auto focusing. Oh, that's, that's I like that. Gives them even more depth. Yes, yes, yes. And then the black. So okay, I'm gonna sharpen the black. And this will be the ultimate test. Look at that. That's that's good. I like it. Well, if the these pencils can hold such a sharp point, then I may not have to use my my other pencils. Good point. Esme says maybe the graininess in these pastel pencils helps keep the point harder since it has a harder consistency maybe but also Luke said that Jason Morgan also sharpens his pastel pencils and they seem to work fine so got to play around with it Christine says speaking of birthdays my cat's birthday today on Halloween and his mum was a black cat one of the kittens was black cool too that's so cool I like that you must have a cat that wanders between dimensions <laughs> um, okay so remember if you've got questions put them in capital letters because I may not be looking at the chat screen all the time plus my webcam is right in the way so I need to move my head to read <laughs> um, okay so the black black's pretty good Oh, it is, it is grainy. Um, okay, so that's, that's very, very good. So now I want to do the skin tone. So I'm going to use a gray. And there's a very, very subtle pinkish tone in there. So I might just subtly add this and I'll show you how I, so I was going to demonstrate this in the tips and trick video, but I'll do it again. 
So you can take a sponge like this or any sponge and you can use it as a blending tool. So I'm using this square sponge and I'm going to put my grays on there. So I actually saw this method done by Bokeh. So B-O-K-K-E-I. She is an incredible, incredible portrait artist. She's amazing. She's also, she's also a tattoo artist. And she, her Patreon channel is really, really good. She's so lovely. Very, very friendly. She struggles with her English, but it's actually nice hearing her <laughs> really make the effort to try and communicate everything as well as possible. But anyway, so she, she sh showed me this method or on her YouTube channel. So she takes a sponge and she'll take her pan pastels and then she will use her blending like that. And then if you want to see what your color is really like, you just take a piece of um, paper towel or a piece of tissue and then you can see if you're getting the right color and then you just sort of, that's how you would blend your palette with pan pastels. So, um, okay. Oh my goshness, look at that. And if you need to go darker, I've got a bit of a darker gray. So I can go a bit darker if I need to. Oh, it's so much fun blending with this. So I, I'm beginning to think that whenever I do portrait art, in the human portraits, I'm, I'm going to do them in pastels, I think. Because the skin tones is just far easier getting the skin tones down without it taking you multiple layers using your colored pencils. You could just like do it in bulk. So adding a smidge of pink. See why I put the black down first because if I go over it in pan pastel at least I'm not going to have my real dark lines disappear. Oh my gosh this is so cool. This paper is so nice too, but I wouldn't dare use solvent on it. I've tried that before and it, it just did not work. It just absorbs it. Jamie's got to go. No worries. Sorry to hear about your internet. I know how you feel. But see you next time. Oh, there's someone at the door. I'll be right back. All good. Vinny's got it. Uh, 
Uh, Clarice is asking, are you using the rough side of the paper or the smooth side of the paper? Um, I'm using the top side of the paper. I guess with pastel paper, you sort of, you want that texture. But I think both sides are pretty much the same. No, no, the top side is more textured. So I'm using the rough side, the top side of the paper. When you're using pan pastels, it's actually good to have a bit more texture um, because the pan pastels stick to it much better. Esme said that she missed the type of paper that I'm using. Sorry, the paper I'm using is the um, Canson Mitientes paper. And it's the grey, assorted colours, grey colours collection. And it's the last colour, the darkest colour in that set. Oh, thanks, Maureen. Uh, Nanette's asking if it's the whole veins. I doubt it because I only ordered it this week, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. It would be freaking awesome if it was the whole veins. But don't get me distracted on that now. <laughs> but I'm having so much fun with this anyway. So. <laughs> I'm gonna have to let you guys know when I get my whole veins. Um, yes, Marie, so the Fabriano Artistic Paper, the Hot Press Paper, both sides are the same, but the Hot Press is really smooth, so it shouldn't have any texture. The 200 GSM or uh, I think it's 60 or 70 pound paper. Okay, the one I'm using, it says pastel on the top, so this is what it looks like. I know there are several different ones and I don't even know where I purchased this from. Alex is saying it's really starting to look as one face. <laughs> it's good. Okay. So I'm just going to add this smidge of the darker greys. So mix the darker grey with a little bit of the pink. say darker but it actually looks lighter I 
Hey Lee, Lee says, Hey Sheldon, I only just saw your, your live now. I'm really impressed with seeing how far a small amount of pan pastels go. I've never tried them myself. Yeah, they really go far and that's why I like using them in, um, for, for big areas. They're also really great for blurry backgrounds. Christine has to leave now. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Christine, but thank you for joining in. And yeah, I'll post the, um, the time lapse as soon as it's done. Luke says, hot press Fabriano Artistico is hard to find over here. Much easier to get the cold press or rough Fabriano. So don't do that. Instead, go completely different paper. So I think the Strathmore paper is really good to go. Um, another, go look at Lisa um, Lockery Fine Arts YouTube channel. She has a video dedicated to her pencil supplies. And check what paper she uses. That would be the paper I'd recommend for you. I don't get that paper because that's really hard for me to get over here. And really expensive too, for me. But for you guys in the States, it'd probably be better. Okay, I think I, I still want more of these pinkish tones in there. It's just too gray. So I'm mixing up more of the pink in there. See if we can pink it up some more. Yes, yes, that's what I want. It's very subtle, but it's there. Oh, looks like Kate. Well, that side does. We don't want the other side to look like Kate. <laughs> Yes, okay, so I really, those pinkish tones to me make a difference. Okay, how's that for immediate skin tone? Isn't that nice and easy? Okay, so let's create some of the darker gray. So I need to find an even darker pan pastel, actually. So I've got a, a light and a, a really dark. So this one is Payne's Gray Extra Dark. So because I don't have a medium tone gray, or I do, but I don't want to go and hunt it out of the cupboard right now, I'm just going to mix a bit of it. So I'm taking this pointy one, use another section on my sponge, take the lighter gray, mix that in. And then I get the darker tone that I want. And now I've got a nice sharp point. So I can... Start blending in those darker shadows. I probably could go a bit more dark. Yeah, Archer's water paper, color paper is also really good, but also not always that easy to get in the United States. I think in the UK, it's pretty easy to get your hands on. But yeah, the Bristol paper I've heard is pretty good as well. Again, not that easy for me to get over here. The Fisher 400 paper is so hard to get your hands on. It sells out so quickly. But I bought mine, I think I've got mine from, it is a, a pastel website that dedicates its supplies to a bunch of pastel supplies. 
Um, I could probably check my phone quick and tell you where I got mine from. Yes, says me, that's right. It's you can quickly lay a skin tone down that looks pretty realistic with pan pastels, but with colored pencils it's gonna take you a very long time. So I definitely think I'm gonna go the pastel way whenever I'm doing a human portrait. Okay, so I can already start feeling the pan pastels moving around a bit. So I'm going to spray that with a fixative. And you'll see now when I spray it, I just got to cover everything. The fixative sort of makes it disappear a little. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to cover everything with okay so I'm using my Micador workable matte fixative to spray let me just open the window quick. Okay, now watch what happens. The color sort of disappears a bit. So it does make the color dull down a bit. <coughs> but at least that's, that's what seals the bottom layer. And now it dries pretty quick, but I'll wait a little bit longer. You can see when it's dry. But it does dull the color down a bit, so you'd have to add a bit more, another layer. <laughs> Thanks, Mojin. I got the quiz. Kate, yay, nice to see you on here. So Kate um, over there 
saying hashtag lucky Kate. <laughs> She's the one that I'm drawing today. <laughs> Ooh. Lee said I sprayed one of my pastel paintings as fixative, never again. The whole painting went dark over about an hour it couldn't be seen <laughs> we had this experience on saturday when we did our workshop and kate can vouch for this but we we did pan pastel and pencil drawings on black paper and then we sprayed it and it just vanished <laughs> it's like the black paper just absorbed all the pan pastels so it was yeah that was quite an experiment so we had to actually draw extremely light so that when we sprayed with a fixative the entire thing wouldn't disappear because of how much it darkens it up so but um with this it's not too bad so that you can still see what i've done except like the highlighted parts that were a fair bit lighter have really dulled down now so you just got to do a couple of layers Fifty hours you spent on that, and it was oh, I know exactly how you feel. I spent a hundred and fifty hours on a Muhammad Ali painting, and I didn't do the right thing, or I didn't prep the surface properly. And after that, it started flaking off. It was flaking off, and I was like, oh, I can't do this. And the piece was like a whole meter. It was a meter by nine hundred, um, nine hundred millimeters. It was massive. So yes, I feel how you feel. I understand. <laughs> um. Yep, I have a window right next to me open. There's a nice little breeze coming through. It's quite cold today, actually. It's nice and fresh. Maureen likes the designs. Congratulations, Kate. Looking amazing. Hello, Zach. Welcome to the chat. Um, Lee says, I put a black background on my painting, and that's why you can't see anything now. Yup, yup. That's... That sounds tragic. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> yes, Lee, that was the one. That was the one. And now it's just hiding at the back of the screen here. And there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Alex, um, if you're going to use fixative, you're just going to have to go a lot lighter than normal. Um, it can't really be avoided unless you don't use fixative at all, which is hard because when you're really layering a lot with pastels, you need to seal layers with a fixative, or so I think. But that's another thing to I think Jason Morgan did a video on a bunch of different fixatives, so that would be worth watching because he predominantly uses pastels. Okay, so this is dry enough so we can keep going, but first I need chocolate. Chocolate. So this is the only vegan chocolate that I found that is really creamy. Most vegan chocolates are very hard and bitter dark chocolate. This is wonderful. And it's non-GMO. So. <laughs> anyway. Mm. So I am going to keep working on the skin tones. Using this grey, which is neutral grey. It's quite it's quite a dark Ooh, it's like a nice bluish sort of grey. I'm 
definitely need to add pink to that one. So mix it up on here with the pink. Because that's more of a cooler tone and we sort of going on the warmer tones. So now you'll see, because we've applied a layer of fixative, now when you do the next layer of pan pastels, it's, it feels like it's really sticking. You can feel the difference. Uh, uh, Non-GMO, look. So no genetically modified um, organisms in there. Oh, Lee, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's profound having someone else feel so bad for you when you um, go through such a process of time and then it's all gone, it's wasted. <laughs> oh, that's great. Lee says he's about three paintings in, working on a German Shepherd at the moment. It's looking great so far. Cool. Do you post your stuff on your YouTube channel? I'm guessing so because you said... You say Lee Ludlow art. Lee Ludlow or Ludlow? Ludlow. Lee. Let's go see. That boxer looks amazing. I'm already subscribed. But you only have three videos on, so that explains why. I haven't seen too much, but everybody's got to start somewhere. So it's good. Put more videos on YouTube. Yeah, sanded paper works amazing with pan pastels and I will have to do one of these uh, streams will have to be with the um, sanded paper. So maybe the next portrait that I get I'll use the sanded paper. It feels amazing. It just really eats through your pencils. But I probably, I'll use pan pastels on the sanded paper but I'll use my regular pencils because regular pencils work great on sanded paper. I probably won't use my pastel pencils because they'll turn into nothing when you use sanded paper. far out I think I think you've said that before have you Lee says I only have two paintings I've done on my channel I'm a prison officer so I don't get to paint so much but it's a real passion now it's all I want to do that's so great to hear being a prison officer would be such a hard job so you'd sort of need to have something that you can escape to far out and art would probably be the perfect thing <laughs> Senelier paper is so nice and I've got some and it's really expensive but it's so beautiful and we need to try it. And then I'll talk more about the paper when I try it. Another one that loves using that paper is Bokeh. So B-O-K-K-E-I. Check out her YouTube channel. It's insane. She's got a shitload of subscribers. One day. I'll get there one day. <laughs> but her work is amazing. Um, and she demonstrates the Senelier paper. And she's actually the one that I got... Um, well, she's the one that motivated me to get the paper, let's say. But I'm yet to use it. So, Lots of opportunities coming this month for this competition. I'm um, trying new things.
Okay, I'm, I'm feeling pretty, pretty happy with these skin tones. So let's just bring that back in. That needs to be darker than that. Okay. Um, actually, that's got quite a bluish tone to it, so we could use that grey. Over here. Kate, I think that looks like your eye. I'm quite satisfied with that. Yeah, sander paper is very expensive. Um, right. What's the time? <gasps> time is flying. We're already an hour and 25 minutes into this. That's good. That's good. I like it. Okay, I'm gonna start adding the pinkish flowers, but I think I need to spray it one more time. Mm. I need to fix Kate's nose here. That's better. Okay, so I'm gonna let's see how that is with the pan pastels for now actually before i spray i think i'm going to start adding these cool like flower smidgey tinges in there um this is gray in here as well So these like translucent flowers over the top will be great with pan pastels. Uh, I'm wondering if I should spray first. I'm thinking maybe I should. Maybe I should. So I'm gonna spray again. Uh, see, my camera's auto focusing. I need to figure out. I wonder if one of you could do like a major favor for me find out how I can switch off the autofocus on the Panasonic uh, what type is it? Panasonic HC let me type it in here can someone just quickly look up how I can switch off the autofocus on the Panasonic HC V seven seven O M camcorder. Because that that's gonna annoy the shit out of me and everybody else watching. So that needs to go. So it's picking up that it's a face, which I guess is a good thing. Okay, let's spray this. So covering everything. I really like the tones as they are, so hopefully it doesn't make it die down too much. Okay. 
it's really made it die down. I'm gonna have to add pencils to make it pop a bit more. Maybe it would be worth my while actually checking out Jason Morgan's video on fixatives. Soon. Trying to bring some of these highlights back. <laughs> hey, Hugo. He says. Zoom to the point you want, and on the upside is the button to manual focus. Because I, I have it on manual. Sorry, you guys are going to see this on the screen, but I mean, let's do this together. <laughs> doesn't give me anything to like select uh, now how do I change that what do I press oh, screen is it portrait enter still does it On the top of the camera. Oh yes, I have a cat on my forehead. On the top of my camera. I can't see the top of my camera. Ugh. I'm sorry guys, I need to take this off so that I can see. The top of my camera. Ugh. So yes, the zoom button's on the top of the camera but nothing else. Face recognition is on. Tap the eye on the screen. What does that do? That is nothing. Tap the eye on the screen. Um, oh, far out. I don't know what to do. Okay. Let's not make everybody motion sick. Now this whole thing is skewed. I have it on manual though. So if I go here, click on manual. <laughs> Keeps doing that. What if I go camera? No? Wait, wait, wait. 
Oh, wait, wait. I got something. Focus. Focus. Manual function. Yes. I think. No. No. That didn't help. Focus. Still does it. <laughs> I am so sorry. Okay, give me a second so I can actually, I'll check out Alex's link and just do this properly because we can't watch the rest of the video like this. <laughs> Real world problems. your camera and choose your two focus points here we have the door frame and the crazy frog power on auto setting will be enabled as default Zoom to suit your shot. So that's on IA. Oh, I see. I think. Wait, why doesn't my camera have that? My camera doesn't have that button. Anyways, it goes focus, manual focus. That's what I pressed. But see, that's for photograph, Alex. I need this for a video. I need it to switch autofocus for video. So that you can manual focus a photograph. But the video just autofocuses. Thanks, Luke. Sorry, guys, I'm wasting a lot of time trying to figure out how to turn off the autofocus. Good night, Luke. See you soon. Uh... Okay, so I need to find out how to turn, turn face recognition off. Okay, wait, let me try and turn it so it's not on a portrait. Oh, wait, let's see if we do this. Okay. It's fine. Menu. Face framing. Off. Exit. <gasps> there we go. Maybe if I just freaking looked at the settings to begin with. There. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, now I know. 
Okay, back back into it. Now we now we're gonna do the pink little flowers. Let's just get straight into it. I think. Do I want to use pencils? I think so. So we've got some really nice. No, let's let's use the pan pastels first. So I'm gonna use this color, which looks yellow on the video, but it's actually like a, it's an orange tint. And I'm gonna use this for for the flowers over here. Ooh, so pretty. With pan pastels, you just want to block in shapes and any details and such you would really just do with your pencils. Thanks Esme, it's all turned off. I should have just checked the settings properly to begin with. I'm not very technologically inclined. I usually fear having to change any settings on a camera on that because then I never know how to s switch things back. Okay, now I'm gonna use the burnt sienna tint which is a beautiful color I'm going to use a bit of this color, orange extra dark. I'm not too fussed about cleaning my sponge off but, um, between colors. But it's easy enough to just wipe your sponge, whether you're using a dark or light color, just wipe it off on a paper towel. It should be good. So I think I'm going to work a section at a time. So I'm going to spray, mm, no, let me see if I can just draw on top of it. So now I'm going to add a bit more detailing to that. So I'm going to sharpen my tan light pencil. Look at that loveliness. What a nice pencil point. Okay. See, I need to remind myself not to lean my hand onto this paper because it definitely makes a mess. It's not so easy. I also want to have a 
pinkish sort of color ready. That's more of a brownish tone. I'm also going to sharpen my bister. So the really, really, really bad downfall about my sharpener, you may want to consider this before you purchase one, is that it eats through your pencil. It eats through it quickly. So if you want your pencils to survive, then you may not want to get a sharpener like mine, which is the School Smart Electric Sharpener. not the color I really want I don't think yes okay I want this color English red Okay, so I'm gonna give it, how long? I'll give it, what's the time? So it's quarter to 11. So at 11 o'clock, I will announce tomorrow's winner. So we'll put it on the randomizing app and get it ready. So if you haven't entered yet and you would like to, um, get a chance of being in tomorrow's drawing then you need to enter now and you can see the description in the video if you want to know how to enter otherwise you can just watch and enjoy the free tutorial Let's okay, so I'm gonna use my <laughs> I'm gonna use my taper point. <laughs> Mr. Zeke says your face is priceless when you sharpen your pencil, it's like you're waiting for it to snap. I know a part of me is because it's pastels are fragile. <laughs> I do not I'm 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 sharpening it well 
strongly hoping that it does not snap. So I think the strength in that focus of not wanting to snap is what convinces my sharpener to not snap it. <laughs> These um, shapers are really great to get that um, texture look to disappear. Using a brush is useless because a brush just lifts the pan pastel off of the paper. So you really want to use a shaper. So I'm going to add a bit more grey into the forehead because I've gone a little bit over here. And then, and then if you put in excess and you want to lift things off, then a brush would be fine. So I'm just using some old makeup brush. The idea is to have the, the flowers look translucent over the forehead. So I want to create the gap here. it sort of does so I'm using this gray which is silver gray because that's the closest gray to the pan pastel gray I have on here and then I'm going to use it as if to outline the shape of the flowers that are translucent over the forehead so you'll see what I mean in a second that in. Okay, and then if I create just with a little bit of a darker gray, I can create those an indication of those beautiful forehead wrinkles, okay? <laughs> And then to make it seem translucent. And then I'm going to add some of the hair in here. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So these strokes of hair are gonna help it make help make help it look translucent. Help make it look translucent. She used black. 
we can use the black for that. Oh, there we go, that's better. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna sharpen this and do a streak of hair. So doing streaks of hair over the face or over the eye is always scary. Ooh, ooh. Okay, okay, that, that'll do. That looks cool, I think. Put a few more there. Let's put, a, put another one there. Ooh. Okay, let's not let's not do any more. Uh, now I don't like this one over the eye. Oh no no! Don't do that. Ah, oh, that's okay. That's okay. We'll leave it. <laughs> it does look... looks okay. Um, okay. Keep working on those flowers. What's the time? It's almost time to announce the next one. Maybe I should move my hair out the way so you guys can see the cat. And my big forehead. Not a cat tattoo, thank goodness for that. Can you imagine that? Getting a tattoo like this just for one day in a month. <laughs> Should be careful what I say. There are people out there that do that. There we go. It's my kitty cat. Okay, so let's keep working on these flowers. Make them look a bit more pretty. I want a dark, a dark brown or, or purple. Sharpening my Mars Violet Dark. Oh, there we go. So we can create some shadowed areas in here. Ah, it feels so grainy. Oh, that feels horrible. Uh, Esme's asking, have you ever messed up a drawing by messing up the hair strand? Um, I have made the mistake of putting hair strands where I don't want them, but usually I manage to fix it. So if I spend the time, I can really fix it and remove that hair. 
but it doesn't look too bad so I'm just gonna leave it be These flowers look like flowers. It's not my dogs. Guess I can close the window now. Oh, it's that time. It's time to announce. Okay, let me put these down. Look, every time I pick up a pencil, I just hold it in my hand until my hand can't hold anymore. So I need to put it down. Um, okay, so we got a few new entries since yesterday. So the last one I entered in the list was Maureen. So since Maureen, we have also got Christine. So I add number 16, Christine. We also got Lundy. And let's just put Lundy there. Christine Lundy and Jackie. That's one name I could never spell right. And it's Jackie. Jackie. Okay. I think that was it. Yes. So those were the new entrants. So if a repeat name comes up then we'll just ignore it and randomize it again oh you guys can't see that let's put it there okay you guys ready 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 There's a really big lag.
I'll just wait a little bit for the lag. Oh! Ready. I got it ready. Okay. So tomorrow, uh, let me just say who's in there. So we have Alex, Amal, Fiona we did yesterday, Joanne, Kate we're doing today, Marie, Ronnie, Angie, Camilla, Renee, Katya, Lenny, Luke, Majin, Maureen, Christine, Landy and Jackie. If at all you notice that I have forgotten your name and you know for sure that you've entered, you have to let me know. Let me check. Cause. Oh no no. See someone put in a comment that they're entering when it should be in my inbox. I remember that. So there should be another name to add to this list. Yes, Bell. Make sure you send it to my Facebook inbox, not to, not as a comment on my Facebook page. Because then I might miss you like I almost did now. Let me just double check the patrons. Coolness. Okay. Okay, okay. I think we are we are ready now. I don't have any more accidental comments. Mm, it's good. Okay, we're ready. We're ready to press randomize. Who's gonna be next? Are you guys getting impatient yet? <laughs> Okay, randomize. Woo! Christine! Congratulations! How lucky you entered today and you got in. You got in. Well done. So Christine's image is of her grandson, Jameson. So let me download it. Down lady load. I need to remember to press press record on my camera. Okay. So. so there we go. That's Jameson. That's the image that Christine entered for the competition. Congratulations, Christine. He's so cute. Maybe I'll turn him into a little elf or something. I don't know. I'll have to see. So I'll be drawing him tomorrow um, for the number three winner of 25. And then I will announce the next winner during that stream. Okay. Well done, Christine. Well done. Cool, cool. So we set, ready for tomorrow. <laughs> hey Val. How 
are you going with your bear, Valerie? How is thou going? We'll have to upload that soon. Moving on. these flowers here so slowly Val says slowly <laughs> gets like that sometimes maybe we pick too big a project next time we'll do something simpler <laughs> Yay, Christine! Maybe I should do this kind of thing once a year. Nice, lovely, light pink. Zeke's asking, did you score your paper? What do you mean? Score as in a scale from 1 to 10 or score it as in s s scratch it? Lace. I still don't know what you mean. <laughs> Explain. Val reckons Zeke is saying score as an in indent the outline. Yes, that's what it means. Actually, what I did is instead of using graphite because you can't see it on there, so I did transfer my image on. So I took a print, where be it? I took a print like this, 
And I put pan pastel on the back, which you can't see, but there's white pan pastel all over there. And then I used a sharp etching tool, yes, to put the outline onto the paper. So it beats having to try and buy like the white transfer paper. You can just use a white pen pencil. Transfer it that way. Works just as well. So I'll be transferring my images for this entire competition because I have no time to go ahead and freehand the outlines. So freehanding outlines and that would be more dedicated to the Patreon short tutorials um, or like a tips and tricks video or something, but not for these live streams. Because doing an outline freehand still takes a lot of time. Plus, these, these videos would be extremely boring if you had to watch me freaking try and figure out the outline every time. But there are patrons that like to see that, so we do that for, I'll do that on that channel. Yes. Alex says it's quarter past one in the morning. Go to bed. Yes, you have permission to go to bed for sure. Thank you so much for joining, Alex. <laughs> Thanks, Val. Don't know what that was, but thank you. You guys are on top of it, on top of it. Okay. Let's blend that in. So I'll be streaming for another 40 minutes because I don't want to stream longer than three hours because that's just too much. But I'll keep going until this is done and then the time lapse will be put up as soon as it's finished just like I did yesterday and then I will start working out what I'll be doing with tomorrow's image
So Val's asking me, what am I doing with all the completed pieces of the month? Well, I was thinking that those that would want it, so obviously the, the first opportunity would be to find out if whoever I'm drawing wants the drawing. And if they do, they just have to donate whatever they feel they want to donate on my website. And I ask at least that they cover the postage cost. So if it's international, it will be $22 international post. Um, and then they can decide what they want to pay for it. And for those that can't afford it, but they can pay for postage, they can still get their image. I think yesterday I did say for $50, but no, as long as you cover the postage, I'll send it to you. And then if you would like to pay some more, then you may. Totally up to you. Mm, that one broke like three times. <laughs> ah, Gareth, you're going to chase people away from this, <laughs> this chat. <laughs> For anyone that's on here and you don't know what this is about, read the description. I would uh, imagine that you do that before you watch a video. Okay, I'm spending a bit too much time on them. I'm going to move on. Most of it's cut off anyway, so that's there's supposed to be a line there.
Might add a bit of the black. Gareth, I'm using the Krita Color Pastel Pencils. Yes, Krita Color Pastels. Okay. So I'm going to use a sponge like this. I'm going to see, maybe I can do all these flowers without going too, too detailed. Just block in these beautiful colors. Oh, I think I want to use some of this over here. Okay, Gareth, I will go and repeat. No, I need to remember to record. Far out. Um, I do not like the Krita Color Pan Pastels. They're very grainy. They're the only pan pastels I have, so that's why I'm using them. I mean, the only pastel pencils I have. Did you go and order them first, Gareth? That is naughty. You should get reviews first. Do you not check for reviews before you buy things?
Yeah, the pen pastels work much nicer. I think I'm just gonna... I'm not gonna worry about detailed flowers. I just like the soft, soft blended look of the flowers. Mr. Zeke asked, how much longer did yesterday's portrait take me? It took me in another three hours, so I spent a total of six hours on it. Well, no, I did have about a 40 minute lunch break. So, five hours and a bit total. <laughs> so my two moderators for today is Maureen and Valerie so be careful <laughs> they are deciders of which comments get seen and which ones don't
I just want to create blobs of, blobs of color with the pan pastels. I don't even want to bother with detail. They just look so pretty. It's very matte on the camera, doesn't it? Okay, let's do these teeth.
Yes, it's like an eyeshadow applicator. If you buy, you can buy a whole, it's by Soft, S-O-F-F-T. And you can buy all the sponges in like a bulk pack for really cheap. The outline of the moth and all the real black bits in the teeth and the eye, I did use my black polychromos pencil. Now I would like to do the moth. So I'm going to get my black pan pastel out. Okay, I think I'll use pencils. So, grey. Yes, pan pastels are very expensive if you buy the whole set at once. But you can buy them individually and just collect maybe a couple a month and then you should have a whole set in no time. Why do I 
think there were two circles on this. Maybe a bit of one. That's black. Yes, pen pastels last a very long time. Yeah, so the unfortunate thing about using p pastel pencils is it's going to look matte like this. It's not going to look as bright and pigmented as, as, as pigmented as you can get with colored pencils. That's another reason I really like colored pencils. It's going to be a very like faded matte sort of color.
I think I might use my white paint marker to enhance the white spots. I really want to add some of this purple. to do the teeth. I just did them like smashed it. Just smashed it. Huh. Oh no. Oh no. It just added yellow to the teeth. No, go away. Should have left him alone. Okay. So I'm coming in with my black pencil to enhance. Oh dear. To enhance the black. Now <laughs> value the second one today to say to use they work okay with water. Kate's loving her image so far. <laughs> Soft pastels work with water too. Pan pastels work with alcohol. Mm, I don't know. Kate's ask, uh, Maureen's asking if Kate likes it. Uh, Kate says, I feel so privileged. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to do the yellow teeth, but they don't look yellow anymore. They're all good now. Yes. Okay. So I think we're actually going to get this one done in time. <laughs> I should get this live stream up in no time. had a serious amount of fun doing this. If only 
pastels could be as nice and dark as regular pencils. No, I still gotta do this guy here. Mm, I need to lean my hand down. Okay. Oh, someone's at the door. Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry, I just paused for a second because Danielle was at the door. So. <laughs> So 
But I'm going to use the black as the final touches, just to enhance those shadows between the flowers. So yeah, it was buffering because I just paused it for a sec. But it's all good now. The shadows, that just helps add more depth to it. That looks skew, I know, but there should, it's going to be <laughs> divided across like that. I just went over the line a bit. I'm tempted to add more of this purple. Oh, yes, that looks good. The teeth are just having it in for me. <laughs> I just tried to scrape off a piece of black and then made the tooth black. There we go, we just make them extra white. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Gareth. Yep, I'm about to finish. I'm just about ready to sign this off. And then I'm going to do some research actually on how to finish this off as a pastel piece. Um, I'm a bit afraid to actually spray this with a fixative now. <laughs> So I'm scared it's going to completely dull it down, which is really not what I want. Actually, speaking of which, I think I'm going to add just a little bit more of those nice highlights. The grey and pinkish highlights on the skin tone.
I like that. Okay. I am going to call that done and sign it off with actually no before I do that I want to create some nice popping highlights on the butterfly with a white paint marker and may as well do it in Kate's eye as well really make that pop <laughs> In that envelope there so those are the stickers I use on the back of the envelopes to seal them I think I'm going to highlight some of these flowers as well. I probably said that I'm finished about five times and I'm still going. <laughs> it's always the finishing touches. Hey Joanna, I'm about to finish off <laughs> and you're logging in now.
Oh, you've been on for a while. <laughs> She's saying, do you find working on this color paper you have to add more white to make your colors pop when using pans? Um, yes, you do need to add more white, especially if you're going to spray it because the white just sort of disappears the minute you spray it with a fixative. No, I'm just, I'm going all out with this pen. I think it's actually creating a really nice effect. Kate's eye looks so realistic, so that's that's a real bonus. I know it's dripping. And that's cool. Um, Okay, so since I added that much white, I'm going to make her skin tone pop more by adding just white to her skin. does make a difference.
Okay, now I'm done. I'm signing it and it's done. Finished. So I use my white paint marker to sign it. Where am I going to sign it? Just over here. Just like that. And then I'd probably put a nice little matte board to frame it properly so it doesn't look so jaggedy edged. And that's it. Oh, oh, I just noticed something else. Just darken these up. Okay. There we go. Thank you, Kate, for entering. And it was so nice to see you um, at the workshop on Saturday. And congratulations, Christine, on winning tomorrow's one. And I will see you guys soon. Um, check the description if you want to enter. And thank you to everybody who logged in today. Happy Halloween from Australia. Some of you are only um, having Halloween tomorrow. But anyways, thank you for joining me. And I will see you tomorrow. And yes, thank you for the first time. It's really nice to see some new faces on here. And it's, it's really great because when you guys ask questions, a lot of my other students on Patreon are very helpful and they will answer your questions as well. Um, and then I try and answer them as best I can. Great. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs>